Um, I saw a video recently on Mr. Excel's YouTube channel about adding sporadic totals. And the solution was created by an Excel MVP by the name of Bob Umless, and he used macros. One uh, procedure which was very, very quick and a very good way to do it, but if you're not comfortable with macros or you can't use macros, I'm going to show you a way to do it with formulas. So just to review the problem, uh, you have these different groups, or as Bob said, chunks of data. And what you want to do for each of these different chunks, and this could go down many thousands of rows, you want to add a subtotal just beneath uh, the last number per group. Now, a couple of challenges. Number one, the numbers could be in column C or column D. And number two, if uh, you go in here and type George twice and you've got new numbers, then the subtotal, you'd want that to um, appear in this cell because you'd have new numbers here and here and you want the subtotal to go here. So with macros you can just loop through and you can add the subtotal, but with formulas uh, we'll have to put it over to the side, but it can still be done. So I'll show you the steps that we can use to make that work. Now the first step that we want to do is make it a little bit easier on us because as I said, the numbers could be in column C or in column D. So let's uh, create this step one, this first helper, and get all the numbers in one column. So I'll click inside of here and you see what my formula is doing. It's basically saying uh, if C3 is a number then give us C3 else if is number D3 then give us D3 else give us a blank. So now I'll quickly drag this down and you see that it's working nicely. We get all the numbers in one simple column. Why make all, you know, the formula is very complicated if we can just make it simple this way, it's good for teaching as well. So two columns, the numbers are always on the right, just a simple if statement. So our second step is we want to identify the row where the subtotal should go. Now here we can see that it's row 7, uh, row 13, 23, and 28, but this could also change. If I come in here and take this away, clear this, uh, if the data changed the next time, maybe you get a, you get a new set of data, your, your total here would have to change and flag this row instead of that one. Okay, so here's the formula. The AND statement will give you a true if both conditions are met. So we have logical test 1, logical test 2. Both have to be true in order to get the true value. Here it's false. So we're checking. Uh, the value above is number G2, which is false. Not is number G3. So this would, this would tell us, let's just drag it down and we'll see. We're only going to get a true when the value up to the left and above is a number and the value immediately to the left it not is a number, so is not a number. So here we're getting true, true, we have four of them in the exact place we want. So if I put in another George, this is going to change. Put in a random date, uh, text 5 and another number. Now, this is now false, and this is true, so that's working. So a simple AND function when both the conditions have to be true to get a true value here. So I added some conditional formatting here so you can see the true is now in bold. And uh, the next step we want to do is this. We want to add a group number. So, you know, obviously this is group 1, group 2, 3, and four. So we want to simply do this in the lightest possible fashion uh, because sometimes people ask me, well, why can't I just use a moving count if or moving sum if? It would work perfectly fine in this situation, but if you had 300,000 rows, there are some formulas that are still okay, but other formulas would get very, very slow and could crash your computer. So this is what I did instead. Uh, here I'm just saying a simple if statement, which is very light, if h3 equals false, so that's true in this case, we simply want to get the value above us. And I put in that 1 as sort of a, a dummy counter. Uh, so we have our if statement has the different parts, logical test. If it's false, we just want the value above. We're not going to increase it at all. It's the same group. That's our true. If it's false, meaning that this is true, then we want to take the value above plus a 1. So it will increment. I'm going to drag this down, and now you see how we've got group 1 and 
it'll make sense in a minute, but here we have a 2. So not that these go together, but you'll see in the final formula an easy way to, uh, to get this to work. Let's get our subtotal in these rows where we have true. Okay, now, our final step, add the subtotal, and I'm going to use, a l well, a formula that includes the sum if formula. So let's take a look here. We want to get these totals only where we see the true in column H, right, which is just below where we have our different groups. Okay, so let's take a look at this formula. The first thing I'm doing is I'm allowing, actually, allowing Excel to stop if it doesn't meet our conditions, just so it's a bit lighter. So if H seven is not equal to true, then simply stop. So here's our condition, that's our logical test, and we're giving Excel the opportunity just to put a blank and not do this, not look at this formula. The last part is, so if it's, if H seven is not equal to true, then blank, else this means that it is true. That, in this case, we have a true value here. So now we want to do a simple sum if. So think of it now just ignoring all of this because we have a true value here. The sum if is saying, look at column I, which is in green here, which matches the green there. Take the value from this cell, which is a 2, subtract a 1, so it's the same group as the one above. And now what we're doing, so that's our condition. So here is our range. That is our criteria or condition. And uh, here we have what we're adding up, which is column G over here, the numbers in one column. So let's just press enter. I'm going to drag this all the way down and drag this up. So now we have these totals exactly where we wanted them. And let's just check to make sure it's getting the right numbers. So I'm going to go over here, highlight this. Bottom right of my screen, I see the answer 2665. And of course, the same thing here, 1338, uh, which matches this. Um, so. So now we have to test this to make sure it's actually working. Um, let's do a couple of things. Let's add a row here for George, random date. Um, let's just add ABC. And we're going to add a number. We're going to add just a 1. So we want to make sure that this true goes from here to there. The to subtotal goes from here to there. And with a 1, this, sh this, sh this value should now be uh, 2729. So let's see if it works. I'm going to type in a 1. And sure it does. There it is. The, the subtotal is now in the cell below. Now, what if we take a row away? So let's go up here and watch what's going to happen in this area. If I just delete this, the true jumps up a row and our total jumps up a row as well. So just to quickly review, uh, our first step that we wanted to do here was simply to get all the numbers in one spot, which they are right here, because it could be in column C or column D. Next step, we wanted to identify the rows where our subtotal should go. So that, here we have it, and if we add something, it will change. Add a new row over here in the blank rows, or take one away. Uh, so then we're identifying the group numbers, and these, these numbers, you'll see how, you know, the 3 minus 1 is the same as the group above. So really, this is one group. Uh, this is the next group, and so forth. Uh, finally, we're adding the subtotal when it's looking over here at true. And this is a, you know, I think it's a very light way to do it. So like any big problem, just break it down into steps and you can solve it.